say goodbye to the old inverter and the old shore charger converter. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Bye bye. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. If you're new here, my name is Talon Sai and I make new videos every single week. Today I'm joined by Aaron from Rome Rig. He drove all the way out to where we're at right now, Boulder Nomadic, out here in Boulder, Colorado. He drove from Connecticut, so. A nice 28 hour drive. <laughs> nice 28 yeah. hour drive. Well, thanks for coming out. The reason he's here is because we're doing a complete battery conversion of the van. We're going from the AGM deep cycle lead acid batteries over to a lithium setup that you designed yourself. Yep. There's a lot of options out there on the market and when you approached me showing me your system, I was just like, oh my God, I need this in my van. It's, it's a game changer in Rebels. Yeah, could you give us a quick brief overview for those who aren't familiar why the lithium is better than the AGM and what we're actually gonna be doing with your system? Sure, so first thing why lithium is better is uh, each 23 pound battery in my system is roughly equivalent to three of the AGM batteries that are under your van right now. And Dang. they weigh about <laughs> 70 pounds each. So 23 pounds replaces 210 energy wise. Also lifetime, they're basically a lifetime battery. Uh, you can wear them out, but it would take thousands and thousands of full cycles and even a full timer like you, yeah. it's just not really reasonable in the lifetime of the van. Yeah, to put that into perspective, I've had my AGM batteries for almost two years now. Again, I am pretty much full time now and they're like dead, really close to dying completely. So you'll get more usable power out of a lithium battery. Correct. Um, I also uh, centralize all the components inside the van underneath the bench seat. Uh, the stock system kind of has batteries and wires and components all over the place. So everything comes out it's 354 pounds of stuff that comes out and then it all gets replaced with a centralized system uh, that replaces the entire bench seat he's also getting a second alternator on there so he can charge really quickly like uh it's gonna have 630 amp hours of storage <laughs> and uh if that's fully empty roughly three hours of driving and it will be fully charged uh that 630 amp hours of storage will run the air conditioning for if it's a really hot day in the desert six hours but if it's not a hot day or at night or anything like that, it'll run it for much, much longer. So that's insanity. I'm, yeah. I'm stoked, man. Yeah, Cause like awesome. power right now is probably my only limiting factor. Everything else in the van has already been upgraded. So this is like final nail in the coffin or like icing on the cake, I should say, to have this thing completely decked out and ready to go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big change for a guy like you. You can like cook in the morning without running your engine. <laughs> right? Shocking things like that. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be a game changer. Yeah. Well, we could sit here and talk about this all day. Let's just jump right into it. And cool. if you don't mind, I'll just ask you questions as we're going. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, Nicola from Boulder Nomadic and I are gonna gonna do uh, what's called the thrash, the teardown. So there's just like a whole bunch of stuff that has to come out of the van. And then there's a bunch of organization and prep. And then the new system drops in and gets wired up and cool. we're ready to go. Let's do it, man. Let's get it going. One last walk around of the van in its current state, bench seat control panel, this entire wall, all of this stuff is gonna be basically torn out. The seats, the floor over here, we got our work cut out for us. So step number one, what are you doing under there? Oh, uh, gotta disconnect all the batteries so that we can take things apart without shocking ourselves or causing any short circuits. So I tend to work under these without a creeper. I just slide around on my back and then I get a little more clearance. Um, so if you got a nice smooth garage floor like this, works out well. So now that I got all the grounds disconnected, disconnect all the positives and we're going to take the batteries out and then it all just starts going from there. Alright, let's so we'll get the batteries out here. So while he's ripping that out, what are you doing? I'm just taking the seats out here, and that's going to allow us to remove all of the Winnebago battery wiring that is under the passenger's seat. And that all moves back up to the slick back panel that we'll be installing up there. Cool. So at least you can stay clean for the most part. I can stay clean for <laughs> once, but... Aaron, not so much. <laughs> what? Okay, no, You're getting dirty. Yeah. Okay. I use my van. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, wait, wait. Bye bye. Bye bye, thank you. All right, we're back from a quick intermission. We had some lunch and now these guys are already back to work. Aaron has been chugging away on the inside here and he's gotten a lot done. So not only are we of course doing the lithium conversion, but we're doing a lot of other things too. Like what'd you do? You removed the short loop for so the heating thing, system? Yeah, there's a thing called the short loop here and it was uh, an attempt to make the system more efficient, I guess. Uh, the problem with that is in the winter, you can only heat your tanks when the thermostat is actually calling for interior heat. So you could be in a situation where you don't have your heat turned up high enough and it's really cold outside and you still freeze your tanks. So we get rid of the short loop. So any Anytime there's glycol pumping through the system that's hot, it will be heating the tank. So if you're running from the engine heat exchanger and you have the system on and um, hot water on, glycol pump runs, engine heats the glycol, it's going to heat your tanks. That's great. That's the way it should have been. Less to think about. It's just exactly. makes sense. Also eliminate, there's a thing called the aquastat that can cause the hot water to, to basically start hot and get cold and get hot again. So we eliminate that. That's a uh, Jim Rickson suggestion actually. Um, and there's just kind of a lot of wire rerouting and organizing and there's feet of extra wires so we kind of do these zigzags and clamp it in there nicely and well it's super clean compared to what it was that is for damn sure yeah so just kind of getting it ready to put the wall back in place and then drop the system in and start hooking things up cool we also removed the lap belts because that's something that I never use anyway and before I mean it's really not all that secure anyways it's just bolted to the Winnebago wood so chugging right along Time for the wall, huh? Yep. So this is the same wall that was in here before, but now the guys actually routed this out for the new plate and the system that's gonna be going in here. So we gotta get fuse panels down here now. Yeah, and then a bit of a juggle, but just persuade it into place. What is this for here? Oh, uh, that's for your AC fuse panel. AC so, fuse panel. AC breaker panel. Oh, okay. So it used to be on the side of the seat. Yep. And now it's gonna be right here behind your seat cushion. Meanwhile, Nicola's up here. What are you doing? Alternator. Yeah, I'm installing a second alternator. It'll push a couple hundred amps easily, so you'll charge your batteries quick. It'll sit on its own bracket right under the stock one. Sweet, man. You have so much power. All right, man, what's up next? All right, so we're getting ready to drop the system in. This is the entire replacement for that. So that whole pile of wires and batteries and pieces here and a little bit everywhere gets replaced with this new steel bench frame. The batteries all sit in this space. Inverter is over here. 3,000 watt inverter. 3,000 watt inverter, 100 amp charger. And this is the DC to DC uh, converter for charging from the stock alternator. It's also the solar controller. Each battery's got an individual circuit breaker. Nice thing about the way this is set up is you can take the bench seat panels on and off. So if you ever need to get to anything to work on it, you don't have to take everything apart. It's all right there. And then there's a new control panel assembly. All the switches are labeled. Actually tells you what they do. No more key for the bed. The panel is wired with a harness. So basically this just plugs into the harness that's already on the system itself. So this ships to the installer, fully assembled, tested, kind of ready to go. And to put this big pile of stuff over here into perspective a little bit more, the reason there's so much excess wiring in this is because Winnebago is making these things quickly and the way they route the wires ends up having all this extra wire over here. And you pulled, you said, about 354 pounds of material. 354 pounds of material goes out and then uh, stage one is about 190 pounds or so that goes back in. Stage two is about 240 and then a stage three is about 290 and change. So this is stage three that we're doing with yes. the alternator and all the batteries. This is going to be way more power than I'll ever be able to even use. That's what you want though. That's exactly what I have want. it. Go big or go home, right? Exactly. If you're going for it, go for it.
Fucking different, huh? Battery time. What up? Time to open up some batteries. We're gonna squeeze six of them in here. Oh yeah. Ta-da! Oh, look at them. Easy way to unpack them. Firing up all the batteries. House battery. Woo! Oh, I gotta reverse the bed switch. That's cabinet lights. Bathroom light. Okay. All right guys, after a full day of work, these guys right here have completely knocked it out of the park. This is what was in the sat van. Batteries, wires, cheap wood. I can't believe that stuff was I was holding that together. So thanks to these two, the van has been completely overhauled. Do you want to give us a rundown of the whole setup now? Yeah, so we uh, you know, started this morning and uh, I'm actually, uh, I actually want to thank Nicola from Boulder Nomadic. He's one of my uh, installers out here. Pleasure to and, be here. And uh, came out here for the install and he was gracious enough to let us use his shop and uh, awesome help here because we got this done in about 10 hours. I can't believe you've done it in 10 hours. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so, check it out. Yeah, so, you know, it looks like it came this way from the factory. So the entire bench seat's replaced, including the wood. And the laminate that we use is the exact same laminate that Winnebago uses on everything. And the trim that's used actually comes from the same company that Winnebago gets trimmed from. So it's the same color, it's the same material, so it looks like it came that way. But what didn't come that way is there's now 630 amp hours of lithium batteries under the seat, a 3000 watt inverter charger, uh, just a super nice setup. We've got a alternator under the hood that's roughly 4,000 watts. So when this thing is empty, he'll probably see about 280 amps going into his batteries when he's driving. Um, so that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, charges it up real quick. You can run your air conditioning while you're driving and charging your batteries. So it really opens up the uh, the, the usefulness of the van. So yeah, we'll do a little tour inside of what changed. So there's a new control panel. Um, you know, before there was kind of switches and unlabeled, unmatched switches and kind of things all over the place. So this is a powder coated aluminum control panel. All the switches are labeled bed up, bed down. It tells you bright and dim on the lights. The code reader for the S-Bar system is now on the wall instead of underneath the bench. And there's some extra spots that are available if you want to add switches for a WeBoost or for rocket launcher or anything you want. <laughs> you can add switches. I like that idea. Yeah. So the... Uh, AC and DC fuse panels used to be on the side of the bench seat here, and they actually get moved to behind the cushion. That and cleans things up so much because the first thing you're greeted with, especially with the lifted van, are the panels right here. So now it's just like clean, blank slate. Yeah, you can put some stickers there, mount something there, all sorts of options. The bench seat base plywood is exactly the same, so you can still use the accessory bed if you want to. Um, nothing changes about how you how you use the system. Underneath, this is where the good stuff is. If you've ever seen under a Rebel seat before, <laughs> you know what it looks like. And now it is packed. 630 amp hours of batteries. These are circuit breakers. Each battery has an individual circuit breaker and they're all connected to a custom made bus bar that goes right to the inverter. Super efficient use of space. This is insanely clean. You know, all the heating components stay there, the plumbing stays there and it really just sort of makes the entire power system one compact unit underneath the seat, which is the way it probably should have been from day one. I agree. Yeah, that's basically it. And uh, total, total game changer for the use of a Rebel. So right now on the Victron, it looks like we're at 13.1 volts. Um, it tells you chassis battery voltage. So auxiliary is 12.8 volts. We're using 9.89 amps. So that's lights, the fridge is running. The fridge is probably cooling right now because the van was off for a while. It tells you watts, tells you amp hours, percentage. So all this stuff is what you use to monitor the system. There's an app on your phone, a Bluetooth app, Victron Connect, and you can use the app to tell you everything that's also on the gauge here. So like if you're in bed and you want to check your battery, it's got alarms that can go off on your phone or on the gauge if you're running low on power. 
Boom. So it's got everything Sat the same. right there on the phone. Yeah. You can see like the history, how much power you've used, trends, power over time. Super cool, man. Yeah. I can't imagine having a Rebel without it. <laughs> I bought one, I used it for about three hours and then ripped out the AGMs and put lithium in it. This is gonna be a complete game changer for me. I'm just gonna do this to show it off because this <laughs> is something that I could never do before, but watch. Inverter's on, back here, not plugged into anything. AC. AC, high cool. I can do this completely off grid now. I'm in Southern Texas and Death Valley, just dying out in the desert. It's Run it while you're driving, keep the van cool. And pull over and take a nap and not be all sweaty. Yeah, keep yourself cool at night, sleep better. So sick, man, thank yeah. you. It's gonna be a changer. All right, so that's gonna be all for today, guys. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every week. If you have any questions on this system, drop some questions down below. Maybe Aaron can jump on and answer them. Or if you want any more information, just go over to roamrig.com, right? Yep, roamrig.com. Uh, check it out, and if you're in Colorado and you want a system, Boulder Nomadic. Boulder Nomadic, hit them up, and dude, thanks for driving literally across the entire country to come yeah, make this install it's always, happen. Always fun for an adventure, <laughs> man, it's always nice. All right, well, that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks, time. everybody.